As we've made this space sacred for our worship, we acknowledge that others before us have regarded this land as sacred, especially our neighbours, the Ngunnawal and the Gambri people. We commit ourselves anew to working for reconciliation, especially at this time when many of our First Peoples again feel the pain of loss. a call to worship. In one spirit, we are all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, indigenous people, and later comers to this land. The body does not consist of one member, but of many. One member suffers, all suffer together with it. If one member is honored, all rejoice together with it. We are the body of Christ and individually members of it. Baptised by the Spirit, we claim our membership of the body of Christ. The first hymn, as is appropriate for the weekend of Australia Day, is Where Wide Skies Roll Down. 188. It's nice to be home. I had a good time, though, before you ask. Today we're together as a unique congregation for the first time since the new year and in a new set of circumstances. This is not a situation unfamiliar for us, of course. In the last few years, we've done this several times. And with goodwill, we've always been able to adjust and proceed. 
This service is also the nearest Sunday to Australia Day, and I've chosen hymns and prayers of Australian origin to celebrate. But first of all, a prayer for Australia Day. God of grace, God of life, hear the cries from the heart of Australia, the cry of the farmers struggling for survival in the face of change and uncertainty, seeking direction, shaping the future. The cry of the cities, busy and noisy with so many people who meet need to learn to live together in peace. The cry of Aboriginal communities, struggling for justice, sustaining meaning, nurturing creativity, seeking freedom, shaping the future. The cry of the refugees and immigrants, grieving and dislocated, wondering if they are welcome, hopeful for the future, seeking a home. The cry of this diverse land for respect, for hope, for harmony, for peace. God of grace, God of life, hear our prayer. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. And as always, the peace of Jesus Christ be with you all. Please exchange greeting, greetings. The Old Testament reading is from Deuteronomy chapter 18, 15 to 20. It was said to be written by Moses, but we know it was written many years after he was dead. I will send them a prophet like you from among their own people. I will tell them what to say, and he will tell the people everything I command. He will speak in my name, and I will punish anyone who refuses to obey him. But if any prophet dares to speak a message in my name when I did not command him to do so, he must die for it. And so must any prophet who speaks in the name of other gods. And from the Psalm 111. With all my heart, I will thank the Lord in the assembly of his people. How wonderful are the things that the Lord does. All who are delighted with them want to understand them. All he does is full of honor and majesty. His righteousness is eternal. And from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verses 21 to 28. Jesus came to the town of Capernaum and on the Sabbath, Jesus went into the synagogue and began to teach. The people who heard him were amazed at the way he taught, for he wasn't like the, list, like the teachers of the law. Instead, he taught with authority. 
Just then a man with an evil spirit came into the synagogue and screamed, what do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Are you here to destroy us? I know who you are, you are God's holy messenger. Jesus ordered the spirit, be quiet and come out of the man. The evil spirit shook the man hard, gave a loud scream and came out of him. The people were all so amazed that they started saying to one another, what is this? Is this some kind of new teaching? This man has the authority to give orders to evil spirits and they obey him. And so the news about Jesus spread quickly everywhere in the province of Galilee. For the gospel of the Lord. I thought of calling this random words in search of a reflection on Australia Day and the start of a new year. However, two things strike me about these readings. First, both refer to a worshipping community. Indeed, all three, which was why I included the um, small section of the psalm, although Brendan was not able to be with us. And they both emphasize the power of words. The prophet in Deuteronomy promises the prophet, the one who relays the word of God, will be from among your own people, acknowledging both that they have a sense of community and commonality and the importance of confidence in the speaker who is not a stranger. Jesus was teaching in the synagogue and it is anticipated that at the same time, the congregation was learning. Indeed, a tra traditionally, synagogues have three purposes, to worship, to pray, and to learn. In Yiddish, the language of European Jews, the synagogue was often referred to as shul. The linguistic connection to school is pretty clear. As you all know, I've been away and it's good to be home. While I was away, I visited many churches, especially the magnificent medieval edifices which characterize European Christian history. They tower above the viewer and are richly adorned. To a largely illiterate rural congregations, they represented the glory of God. I was overawed that such structures could be created largely by hand without modern machinery, but they were frequently cold and empty. It was being in Sheffield Cathedral, filled to capacity, indeed we tucked into a side chapel, for the Christmas Eve service, which made me feel nearer to God. People, not structures, are what our religion is about. Christianity is a religion of communities supporting and assisting each other. One of Christ's major sayings was, love your neighbor, and his definition of neighbor was broad. He himself felt the need of a group of companions, both to carry on his work and to accompany him. Those medieval churches were huge, both to celebrate the glory of God, but also because entire communities would gather to worship. Today, worshiping communities are smaller, but the influence of Christian ethics is still pervasive, even among non-believers. The Australian expression of a fair go really goes back to love thy neighbor, be part of your community. Protesters of many causes or workers to assist the poor or downtrodden are really acting in the same spirit. We who are lucky enough to share in the church community cannot be exclusive. Each of us belong to many overlapping personal communities, like a flower. 
we can share our own thoughts and insights with each other and with our wider circles. We don't have to be learned in theology to have a valid point of view worth sharing. The other thing I noticed in the Old Testament reading is that God puts great emphasis on the correct presentation of his words, which he will give to a representative of the community. This made me think of the power of words for communities. Jesus uses words both to teach and as a tool in healing the man possessed. Even the evil spirit expresses his malevolence in verbal form. The people also appreciated that he was speaking directly to them with authority, unlike the scribes who generally were reading from the ancient texts and not expounding or explaining them. The power of word of mouth is also emphasized, showing how Jesus' fame and teaching spread throughout the region. Words are the foundation of learning. Indeed, the Bible has often been referred to as the word. We all use words continually. For most people, our thoughts form themselves into words and sentences, even when they're not uttered. We all keep learning. Insights and inspirations occur often at unlikely times and circumstances. We need to be open and share our thoughts with each other. Christianity is a religion of community, of words and thoughts, and the sharing of these enhances all our learning. It doesn't need to be profound or expressed in theological terms. When we speak to it, our communities, it is coming from a known source. A familiar saying is that actions speak louder than words, but we must not forget that words yell, well used are a form of action. Individually and collectively, we may no longer have the numbers or strength to go out and labor in the fields physically, but we have voices and ideas which we can share with each other in the world. All change comes about not simply by hard work, but by advocacy, publicity, light bulb moments which are shared. Let us find our voices. We already have against the wind and the possibility of work with Wesley, the gathering at six. What other fields can we work to spread learning and ideas among our community? We've all been active in the past, but rather than thinking our days of contributing are past, let us remember what can be done with words, drawing up submissions, writing letters, calcul calculating costs are all valuable contributions to projects. Let's seek out companion organizations where we can join with our community to make these kinds of contributions. One idea which inspires me on this Australia Day weekend is the hope of a kinder, more inclusive community. Here words and advocacy can play a big part. The words of our national anthem are currently anachronistic and don't unite our community. I want to share with you a rewritten version by Judith Durham. She skillfully kept the format and sense of the original, but by using different words and images, made it more inclusive and true to our time. We would no longer have to cringe at, for those who come across the seas with boundless gifts to share, knowing how restrictive and exclusionary much of our refugee policy is. Perhaps we should just start a campaign to make it better known. I've included the words on the worship sheet so you can take them home and really enjoy them. Water, soil and sun, grand life for 
What has gone wrong? <laughs> ah, we are. 692.
as you came in, I hope you received a eucalyptus leaf, rather a ubiquitous symbol of our country. As we take up the offering, add it to the offering bowl as a symbol of what you hope to offer to Jesus and to the community in this coming year, or as a prayer for some particular concern, as just a symbolic gesture. Gracious and generous God, we have much to be thankful for. Our faith to worship you, our families and our country. Help us never to take these for granted. We pray that you will receive and bless these gifts as expressions of our gratitude and love. Amen. And now, in preparation for the prayers of the people, we will sing the Care Candle song. Australia Day weekend, as we reminded, we are reminded that we are one, but we are many, and we come from all the lands on earth. We know so many of those lands are in complicated conflict. Our hearts are heavy with that conflict, and we seek to know how we can respond. At the end of each of my prayers, I will say, we are one, but we are many. Please respond with, we share a dream. We are one, but we are many. We share our dream. We are a community of faith and learning. May we be open to each other and to what we are called to learn. We are one, but we are many. We share a dream. We pray with our words. May these words reach out across communities, language barriers, and across faith barriers. We are one but we are many. We share a dream. We pray with our actions. May we listen and be open to what we are called to do. May we be courageous to go ahead with that calling in our words and in our actions. We are one, but we are many. We share a dream. So could you please now join with the Lord's Prayer as in the order of service. You are our Father. You live in heaven. We talk to you, Father. You are good. We believe your word, Father. We are your children. Give us bread today. 
We have done wrong. We are sorry. Help us, Father, not to sin again. Others have done wrong to us, and we are sorry for them, Father, today. Stop us from doing wrong, Father. Save us from the evil one. You are our Father. You live in heaven. We talk to you, Father. You are good. Could you all now please um, join in the hymn, Lord of Earth and All Creation, um, 672 in Tis, and if you could please stand as you are able. share together, blessing each other with the down <clears throat> hymn, Deep Stillness, and we will sing it twice. Mm -hmm. 